Hi everyone, this is the video lesson for 4.5, an algorithm for curve sketching, part 3. If you haven't watched the first part or the second part yet, please go back and watch them before continuing with part 3. In the first part, we talked about the warm-up. In the second part, I continue with example 1a. And now, we're going to continue with 1b. f of x equals to negative 3 x cube minus 2x squared plus 5x. Now before I go through all the steps, again starting with domain, I'm going to take a half a step back. Here's a bonus idea I want you to think about before we start. The number at the very front is negative. The exponent is 3, which is odd. So the fact that this is a polynomial and it's negative odd, you can tell that the function, in terms of its end behavior, is going to go from quadrant 2 to quadrant number 4. And this is going to be meaningful when we finish this at the very end. Now, we start with the domain. And again, in this case, x is an element of a real number. Now, let me just divide this into two columns to keep everything organized. Number 2, intervals. Again, to find the xy intercepts, sorry, not intervals, intercepts, to find the xy intercepts, you can create a table into two different columns. In the first column, to find the x intercept, you have to set y to 0, solve for x. And again, by inspection, there will be three x intercepts. And before I keep going, I do want to tell you that most cases in your homework, the x-intercept are not going to be nice numbers. You're going to get some decimals, and that's perfectly okay. So if you go through factoring, the first step is there's a common factor of x. And in the brackets, it's going to be negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. So 1 of the 3x values is going to be 0. To find the other two x values, you can factor, or in this case, apply the quadratic formula. So x equals to negative b, which is 2 in this case, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a. And again, you can take the calculator, you can do a little bit of mental math, but this is going to be 4 plus 60. That's going to be 64. Take the square root. That's going to be 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 divided by negative 6. That's approximately negative 1.7. And in the second case, that's going to be 2 minus 8, which is negative 6, divided by negative 6, which is 1. So again, really important that you form the habit of writing down the location of the intercepts. Don't just find the x value, write down the location. And this will graph in a moment. Let me just finish with the y intercepts. Now, I'm going to go faster on you. To find the y intercept, you have to set x to be 0. And I hope that by inspection, you can tell y becomes 0, or the location is going to be 0, 0. So now that we have these four points, you graph as you go. Now, if I graph this from left to right, this point is going to be negative 1.7 and 0. The next point is going to be 0, 0. And of course, the third point, 1, 0, just like that. Let's keep going. Now that we found the domain <coughs> and the intercepts, we have to look for asymptotes. And again, by inspection. It's a polynomial, so it's not going to have any asymptotes. And to show that, you have to write that down. So vertical asymptote, none. Horizontal asymptote, oblique asymptote, none. Now we can move on to critical points. So I hope you can see the function at the top. If you find the derivative, this is going to be negative 9 x squared minus 4x plus 5. And your goal 
is to find the critical points. So again, by inspection, there should be two critical points, which are the max and min. So you set this to zero. You can factor a negative to the front. In the brackets, will be 9x squared plus 4x minus 5. And if you continue factoring this using complex factoring, that's going to be 9x minus 5, x plus 1. And of course, x equals to 5 over 9, or approximately 0 0.6, or x is going to be negative 1. Again, form the habit of finding the actual location. So the first critical point, 0 0.6, 1.6. Or if you plug negative 1 back to the function, that's going to be negative 1, negative 4. So you can take the calculator, you can confirm that. But again, graph as you go. I'm going back to the graph. So these two critical points are located at 0 0.6 and 1.6, somewhere there. CP, which stands for critical point. Negative 1, negative 4, which would be there. And again, critical points will be max or min. So before I keep going, I'm giving you an idea that this is in agreement with everything you've learned so far. I'm not saying that's the final answer yet. I still want to show you more steps, but roughly speaking, that's what you're expecting. So again, we just write down the fact that critical points, it's either a maximum or a minimum. Now, of course, sometimes the inflection point is embedded into the critical point, but not always. Now, <clears throat> interval of increase and decrease. So, of course, you can compose a table, two different columns, but really, you just want to figure out all of this on a number line. And the two dividers are going to be the critical values, which are negative 1 and approximately 0 0.6. If you want to use the exact value, that's fine. Just make sure you don't pick numbers you know, too close to it if you're rounding it to 0 0.6. Now, here's a shortcut. Instead of saying pick a number between uh, negative 1 and 0 0.6, or you know, less than negative 1, or greater than 0 0.6, the shortcut is to go back and recognize that y prime is negative 9x squared minus 4x plus 5. So the shortcut is, you look at this and you say it's a polynomial, it's negative even, which means it's going to look something like that, right? So in one step, you can write down the fact that it's decreasing, increasing, decreasing, just like that. So the interval of increase and the interval of decrease are when x is in between negative 1 and 0 and when x is less than negative 1 or greater than 0 0.6 respectively. And again, we're going to use this at the very end. The second last step, again, I mentioned this in the first part, is to combine concavity with increase and decrease. And I mentioned this again in the second part. So, so far we did increasing, decreasing. We now have to move on to concavity. Now, to find the points of inflection, you find y double prime. And so far we found y prime to be negative 9x squared minus 4x plus 5. So y double prime is going to be negative 18x minus 4. You set this to be 0. Your goal is to solve for x. I'm going slightly faster on you because you should be all warmed up by now. And if you bring negative 4 to the other side, that's positive 4 divided by negative 18. x is negative 2 divided by 9. Or approximately negative 0 0.2, just like that. And of course, form the habit of finding the location. If you plug negative 0 0.2 back to the uh, back into the function, the corresponding y value should be negative 1.1. Again, graph as you go. So that's going to be negative 0 0.2, negative 1.1. And again, this should be in agreement with everything else that we were expecting up to this point. So let's label this. And again, IP, inflection point, or POI, point of inflection. Now, to find concavity, I have to go back and draw that number line. And uh, the only divider in this case is the inflection point, which is negative 2 over 9. I'll use exact form this time. You can still use negative 2.2 .2 
that's fine. But again, here, here comes the shortcut. The fact that y double prime is negative 18x to the 1, that's going to be negative odd. So negative odd is going to look something like that. And in one step, this is concave up, concave down. Of course, you can write this down underneath. So the graph is concave up when x is less than negative 0.2. And the graph is going to be concave down when x is greater than negative 0.2. And now comes the most important part. You're combining everything on a single number line. And this is when you're mixing in increasing, decreasing with concavity. So you're taking the superposition or like the overlap. So we just talked about the number line for concavity. The divider is going to be negative 0.2. If we go back to increasing and decreasing, the dividers were negative 1 and 0.6. So you go back and you copy this. So you know it's going to be decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So you go back and you add that in. So decreasing, increasing, decreasing. You also know it's going to be concave up, concave down. So you write down concave up, concave up, concave down, concave down. Now I'm not going to draw the table again. At this point, you should really know this. So if it's concave up and decreasing, it's going to look like that. If it's concave up and increasing, it's going to look like that. Concave down increasing, it's going to look like that. Last but not least, concave down and decreasing, it's going to look like that. And now, here comes the final step. You connect them. And this is how you can tell everything makes sense. So when you connect them, this first part looks like that. Done like that, done like that. So that's going to be f of x, which equals to negative 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x. Now, what we didn't talk about is the max and min. And I want to just take a moment to do both the first and the second derivative tests. So even though you and I know this is a minimum, there are two reasons why this is true. The first reason is because if you go back to the Increasing, decreasing. Notice how it's decreasing, then it's increasing. So this point must be a minimum. That's called the first derivative test. The second reason you can tell is because if you plug it into y double prime, see y double prime is negative 18x minus 4. And if you plug in negative 1, all we care is, is it positive or negative? And if you plug it back in, that's going to be negative 18 times negative 1 is 18, 18 minus 4 is 14, but all we care is it's positive, and because it's positive, it's going to be a minimum at negative 1, negative 4. Now, likewise, we know this point, 0 0.6, 1 1.6 is going to be a maximum, and again, there are two reasons for this. If you go through the first derivative test, notice how the function is increasing, then it decreases. So it's going to be a maximum when x is 0 0.6. And likewise, the second reason is if you go through the second derivative test, you can plug in 0 0.6 into the second derivative. And the only thing we care about is, is a positive or negative. So negative 18 times 0 0.6 minus 4, that's going to be negative, which means it's concave down, which means the maximum is going to be located at 0 0.6 and 1.6. And that's how you do example 1b. Now, in the next part, I'm going to talk about 1c. f of x equals to x minus 4 divided by x squared minus x minus 2. And again, this is from your textbook, page 209, example number 2. Please try this. Please try it. Please try it first. And when you press play again, in the next part, I will continue with example 1c. I hope this makes sense.